Get ready, because today we're going to talk about the top five hero tropes that I love the most. By the way, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm the author of Bad Parts, also the author of Entry Wounds, and welcome to my writing channel. Last week I did a video on my most hated hero cliches, so today I thought we'd get positive and talk about some of the best hero tropes out there. We'll discuss what they are, why they work, and I'll give you examples of each. Also, here's your spoiler warning. The stories in red have the heaviest spoilers. And the first trope that I love is found family. And this is when a hero who lacks a loving family finds one in unexpected places. And the hero develops a bond with strangers or maybe even enemies, and the group chooses to stay together despite their differences. And this trope is great because it gets your characters involved with each other, and it explores the importance of human connection. And characters will support each other, they'll address each other's flaws, and they'll fill the voids in each other's lives. And one last thing I want to point out is that this trope is at its strongest when the story opens with the character losing their family. For an example, let's look at Guardians of the Galaxy. This movie opens with Peter Quill witnessing his mother's death, and right off the bat we see his need for family. He later grows up to become a thief who works alone, and his life lacks meaningful relationships. However, that changes once he gets thrown into prison, and that's where he interacts with Gamora, Rocket, Groot, and Drax. Quill and the other inmates have to carry out an escape plan together, and afterwards they remain a team as they attempt to save the galaxy from a deadly threat. And over the course of the story, Quill develops bonds with his new partners who are all searching for family in their own ways. Second hero trope that I love is the bounce back. And this is when a hero's choices lead to disaster, but instead of accepting defeat, they learn from the experience and use it to better themselves. And oftentimes this creates moments of strong character growth and it makes the story's events feel meaningful. For an example, let's look at Thelma and Louise. And if you haven't seen this movie, it's about two friends who go on a road trip together. Thelma is a bubbly and open-minded housewife Wife, while Louise is a tough and cynical waitress. Anyway, their vacation turns tragic when Louise unexpectedly shoots someone outside a restaurant, and they decide to flee the country together rather than face the police. Later on, while driving toward Mexico, they encounter a drifter named JD, and Thelma takes an immediate liking to him, and she convinces Louise to bring him along. At their next stop, Louise entrusts her life savings to Thelma, who then spends the night with JD. And while in bed with her, JD admits that he's a convicted armed robber, and he tells her how he once pulled off a robbery. Well, see, first you pick your place, right? Uh -huh. Then I just kind of waltz on in, and I say, Ladies, gentlemen, let's see who wins the prize for keeping their cool. Simon says, everybody down on the floor. Now, nobody loses their head, then nobody loses their head. Take that cash, you put it in that bag right there, you got an amazing story to tell your friends. If not, well, you got a tag on your toe. You decide. The next morning, Thelma and Louise discover that their money's been stolen, and this is a huge setback. It's devastating, and their future looks hopeless. It looks like they're going to have to turn themselves in. But instead, what happens, Thelma surprises us by going into a convenience store and robbing it using the exact technique that JD described to her the night before. And it works, and she runs off with some much-needed money, and this proves to be a great moment of character growth for Thelma, whose naive, open-minded attitude initially gets her into trouble, but it also also enables her to learn a survival strategy. Third trope that I love is when a hero refuses to quit. And this is when a hero faces overwhelming opponents, impossible odds, and brutal setbacks, yet they will themselves to continue fighting. And it might involve some special tactic or idea or weapon that enables them to survive, but usually it's just the character showing spirit. And this trope is most effective when the hero is alone or abandoned by their friends, when things look dark. For an example, let's look at the movie Rocky. And this is the one where he gets a golden opportunity to fight against Apollo Creed, the heavyweight champion of the world. And Rocky, early on in their match, is holding his own. He's doing great. But as the fight drags on, things turn bleak for him. The momentum slips away, he takes a serious beating, and exhaustion sets in. Then, in the 14th round, Creed delivers a knockout blow. Rocky goes down hard, and now everything is working against him. He's completely disoriented, his eyes are swollen shut, and even his manager tells him to stay down to avoid further injury. But Rocky doesn't quit. Instead, he fights to get back up. He grabs at the ropes, he struggles to his feet, and he stuns Apollo Creed by challenging the champ to come after him. And this is an incredible display of human spirit, and it's also a defining moment for a hero who's desperate to prove that he's not a bum. Fourth trope that I love is dark yet practical decisions. And this is when a character desperately needs something or they have to make a difficult choice, and they cross a line in order to get what they want. 
Now, this may initially horrify the audience, it may turn off the audience, but within the context of the story, it's a practical and necessary move. And this may signal a hero's inner turmoil, and it creates engaging and memorable moments. For an example, let's look at the TV series 24. In season two, we learn that terrorists are planning to detonate a nuke in Los Angeles, and it's going to go off within the next 24 hours. Federal agent Jack Bauer gets called in, and in order to find the bomb, he has to go undercover with a local extremist group that he has history with. Now, Jack is initially reluctant to get involved, and this is mainly because he's still haunted by the traumatic events of Season 1. But he eventually agrees to help, and with time running out, Jack decides that the fastest way to reestablish his cover is by proving his loyalty to the extremist group. He then asks his boss to bring in a child kidnapper who is slated to testify against the group in an upcoming trial. And once the kidnapper arrives, Jack crosses the line and does something crazy. He abruptly shoots the man, and later he cuts off his head so that he can offer it to the extremists. And this dark yet practical moment shows how clever Jack can be, while also showing how much he's changed as a result of the hell he went through in Season 1. And the fifth trope that I love is the rally cry. And this is a moment where the hero steps up to the plate and takes charge of an ugly situation. The hero rallies other characters to a cause. And this doesn't necessarily have to be a battle cry or anything like that. It can come in the form of a quieter moment where the hero inspires another character to act, or maybe they convince another character to change, or they might even settle a dispute between other characters. Whatever happens, it's a key moment where the hero makes a difference and steps into a leadership role. Now, I have three quick examples for this one, and the first example comes from Star Wars. It's that moment right before the Death Star battle when Luke challenges Han to fight for something greater than himself. And though Han is initially reluctant to do so, the rally cry compels him to help Luke when Luke needs it the most. Another example comes from the Terminator, and it's that moment toward the end where Kyle Reese collapses and Sarah Connor rallies him to his feet. Now, the dialogue isn't the greatest here, but the moment itself marks a key turning point for Sarah. After relying on Kyle for most of the movie, she embraces a leadership role, gets Kyle back in the game, and gives herself a chance to survive. And the last example comes from Fellowship of the Ring. And this is during the council meeting. Here we have the characters debating what to do with the ring, how to eliminate the threat, and tensions start to rise before the group tears itself apart. And that's when Frodo steps up to the plate and delivers his iconic line about taking the ring. I will take the ring to Mordor. Though... I do not know the way. This is a defining moment for Frodo. Not only does he take on a brutal responsibility, but he puts a stop to the Council's heated arguments, he unites the Fellowship, and he sends the group on their important quest. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, what is your favorite hero trope? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of either one of my books and be sure to leave reviews on Amazon. Bad Parts is great if you like small town horror. It's about people trading away their sick and injured body parts in order to get healthy again. And then Entry Wounds is great if you like thrillers. It's about a guy who picks up a haunted gun and he can't put it down till he kills six people with it. Also, be sure to check out my other videos, like, share, and subscribe. And as always, remember to keep on writing.